years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webware, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices. In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. Okay, so let's get into it. Freight and third party receiving, storage, that kind of thing. Let's talk about it. I know I've often seen, you know, flat fee where, you know, these kinds of costs will just get split or lumped into their own room or at the end of a room. Um, sometimes we take it from the estimate and if it doesn't, if the vendor's estimate doesn't have one, do you not estimate a freight? Um, or you know, how, how do you do it, okay, is my big question. I mean, I have seen it done so many different ways through these calls and everything, but from somebody that's done a call to clean up a project and unapply and reapply a million five in payments, I'm, I'm partial to the, the way that I'm about to show you. Okay, now in this case, we can see that um, this client has made a payment for these items on their project, and we have a PO set up based on our vendor quotes, okay? And um, one of the things that I do is I go ahead and attach everything to the file. So I have backup for the vendor quotes, I have the images, I have all this stuff. So I always like to double check what that, looks like okay and um i guess we're not going to be able to pull it up on this one but that's okay oh we are um so i do save all my backup and attach it so i just kind of put it all here and i i do a breakup for things that have multiple items okay so i do like to save all that i save everything i save it along with the way i organize it in our cloud-based office okay um, and if you don't have that or you don't know what I'm talking about, um, definitely look into my website and memberships because i that's how I'm able to handle so many people, okay? I think if I only had one client, I'd be relatively bored even if they were, you know, multiple millions. So that being said, I want to talk about this. So in the, in the uh, vendor quote, they did estimate freight, but... What happens is when we create these POs, and usually I'm going in here to pay it, and if, if there's multiple items and they don't ship at the same time, um, how do you treat it? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that with me, I go ahead and um, I do include whatever it is and do a quote. You can always check that your quotes match your PO. So in this case, just so we're clear, I have a quote that says 249144, right? And when I said I check that, what I meant was I just go in here and look at the vendor quote and I wanna make sure that the PO does match, okay? And if I'm the one that's doing it all, then I don't usually keep rechecking it. This is just when there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar. So you can see it's 249144 right there, okay, the order total. So when we go back in here, and we look at that PO, it should be the same, okay? And it is. So what happens when you get the Amex and it's not the same, okay? Like let's just say the freight was then even $200, okay? Let's, let's say that. So how would you treat that? Would you just, um, you know, dump it all on one, split them evenly? Um, how, how would you do that, okay? And, and again, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, I like I said, I see people do it a number of different ways. And if you find that when reviewing your financials that you are covered or still making money and you're not in the hole where you're you're paying for their fees and just eating anything that's over or under, right? Um, 
me personally, I don't let any of my clients eat costs. I, I don't like to hear those words. So um, the way I do it is I allocate it to um, based on the cost. Because even though some things may be heavier than others, a really easy and uniform way, because that's also very important also, is making sure that you do things in a in a process. Because if you ever get called out or if you have a client that has an accountant, let's say you have a really big client and maybe the client's not the person that's, you know, cutting the checks and doing all that. They have somebody like me or somebody else doing it. Well, in those cases, no, I'm going to pick everything apart. Okay. I will pick apart your costs. I will, I will do all of these things. Okay. And I want to make sure that I'm being charged sales tax on the right stuff and all of that. So, um, you know, and, and while not everybody is a, um, is a, uh, nitpicker client, um, you want to just make sure that you're able to, um, make sense of it all, or the person that's doing this, this end of things can make sense of it all in the event that they ever had to go over it with the client or the client's, um, accountant. Okay. So, um, moving on to that. Okay. So I do, um, before I move on to the receiving part, I do true up. So what that means is when we propose and the client pays it, okay, they, we, we did that based on this cost I, and you'll see that it is marked up, but what happens, so when you do do a markup, I've seen where people have a markup and that covers the over under. There are times that it doesn't, but, um, and, and I don't like to guess, especially with, since the pandemic, everything is so, um, much more okay so in the event that now this was something else so i'm gonna I'm, i am gonna just put this i'm gonna calculate it so i can show you what i mean um okay just for an example and um the freight i said that we were gonna pretend that the freight was an even 200 right because right now it is what it is um 76 11 plus 43 18 Okay, let's just make it an even 125. How about that? So we'll make it easy. Okay, and I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Oops. So in a case like this, um, and I don't like to totally show my working notes, but I, I will in this case because these are my working notes. And what I wanted you to see is that I do it this way where you I took the cost. Okay, oops. I took the this cost and this cost, and I came up with a total, and I split the freight the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back out. Um, and I do have spreadsheets. These are um, actually only available to members now, but um, I have all my cheat sheets for how to do things with private videos. So in this case, um, but I'm, I'm not gonna dive into that because um, we'll just do it here. So in this case, this item actually dropped in freight, okay? And you can see that it automatically marks it up, okay? And um, there still is a discount taken, so that still ties, okay? That's the other thing. And I could have wrapped up the um, discount in this if I wanted to, um, but I didn't. I just um, based it off of the, the um, gross price of this item. And while this went up as well, um, there's also a discount in this. So now when we get to paying this, I just want to show you what this. So now you can see that the freight does match the 125 that now hit our Amex. And I can go ahead and post this payment for 249715. Okay. And I would just post the payment. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and I will post this to um to the right date. And I'll just, and I have naming conventions of why I do certain check references and such. If you don't know what those are, definitely check out that video. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and post this. And that takes care of the freight, okay? So these, you can see. Now you can see that in this case, the client overpaid and over here, they have underpaid. So what do you do? I like to clean it up. So in cases where I might be able to invoice that, I probably would show it. But in this case, for right now, I would clean this up. 
Okay, I would clean that up and take care of it to where this was a zero and the balance would only be on this item. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so in um, money in, I'm just gonna say um, apply. And I just wanna, let's do 625 because that was the date. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply, oh, I'm gonna just do apply um, break over under okay so what I want to do is because you can't post it that certain way I'm going to basically take the overpay and I, you can see that there's nothing in funds available okay and I'm going to just take that 581 and put it here so that way and you can see that I've used up the cost and now if I were to invoice the client, they would owe the $7.43, okay? I'm not gonna do that, but going back to the items, you can now see that this one is taken care of and it's a zero, and this one actually shows the $7.43 that would be due as a result of the freight uh, true up, okay? And then, you know, I'm gonna leave these ones alone because this is, this is how I would set up the components for wall covering. You can see that I always put, um, you know, the images and so that way that we all are aware and you can choose who sees this if you don't want somebody to see it and you can see that I saved the backup for nobody to see it but these I like the client or vendor or anybody to see it okay and I could change that if I wanted to now um, I did want to talk about so if this same thing with this item once it ships now um, I wanted to pause for a moment because I do want to take you into the third party shipping and receiving. Okay. So before we do the third party shipping and receiving, I'm going to just pretend that this freight didn't change because I want it. I, I do want to go ahead and mark it paid as well, just because. So I am going to do that. So now we can go back to our examples. And I wanted to talk about third-party shipping and receiving, okay? Because um, assuming, again, the, this is separate because it's something that wouldn't be received by a third party. So I'm going to leave that alone. But I am going to add back. Um, I went ahead and... Um, filters because I did set them up already so now what I did is is I went ahead and took this um, took an invoice that had the third party shipping and receiving the storage and all that good stuff okay so I want to pull that up so you can see okay give it a second and here you can see that I, I do cover everything because I don't want everything showing, but I break out. You can see here that they tell me what they delivered, okay? And they give me a breakdown of the fees. So I'm gonna move this aside. So, and you can see here, and I am gonna make these active now because I just wanted to hide them for what this was, and you can see that there are other things like the bathroom um, accessories. I'm just gonna make everything active. Okay, so now what we're dealing with is their, their invoice, the third part, I do break it out. So some people, when they say, oh, are you really gonna break it out amongst 20 things? Um, yeah, I would because, um, and again, this is no dig to any of the smaller third-party shipping and receiving but a lot of times I I mean I've said it a lot of times I don't I have trust issues I don't trust people's accounting and I just don't like to um, I, I, with my processes I'm able to do this with virtually not a ton of time invested but the, what I get out of doing things properly and and completely is that in the event that any of these items either gets damaged, gets returned, whatever the case may be, 
you're going to have to do this all anyways. You're going to have to break it all out to back it out properly. And that's usually where people come to me with mistakes or to process because they don't have a really good set process. When you do things fully and completely the way that I teach things, um, because there's so many ways that interior designers are doing business, I like to know and hear you know, what it is you're trying to do. And then we figure out how to best show it in studio or any accounting software that you have. You know, I don't want to, I, I, I often hear, well, is it really this hard to deal to, to do things in studio? No, it is not. But you do not do business the same as everybody else. I promise you that. So, you know, I think that it is very important to know how to properly do things. And if you don't know how to do them or don't find a video either from studio or, or get help from a certified consultant, um, there are multiple ways that you can process things just like in any other software. So I, you can drop any negativity about Studio. I, I've tested a lot of softwares from um, QuickBooks. I've, I've tried a bunch for, um, you know, moving people out of other interior design, project management, and accounting softwares. And um, there are some that I, I actually won't um, do anymore. I'll have you pull the reports if you want to convert to studio because I it's simply too time consuming for me to get the information that I need from some of these other softwares. Um, so and I, I won't name names. So um, now going back to how we did this, I went ahead and I broke up. You can see that there are some um, labor charges, but there are also f freight and delivery charges. Okay, and I did the the storage fee separate because that is for all the items here anyways. So I did break it out separately because it wasn't per item. The only thing that I did do properly and, and break out was the fact that there are, um, I just want to show you what this looks like. So this is the receiving right here. There are, there's delivery, there's receiving, sorry, distance fee, labor, and storage. Labor is all the manual labor that it takes to move these things around. Um, you can see that there was a surcharge waived. Normally, I would have added that. And then there's a fuel charge. So how are you breaking these all out? You can see here that I basically took the cost of the items. I broke it out into a percentage. And I, like I said, I have these all in spreadsheet, in my cheat sheet forms for my um, members. But this is how you're, you would do that. And then when you're setting up these items, that way I know I'm covered. And you can see that it wasn't proposed because this is something that came after the fact. So it wasn't proposed. There is an order. I mean, they, this is part of their contract. They're going to have to pay for this. So when I invoice it out, I want to know that I'm covered. So when I pull this um, PO, you can see here it's 210940. It, I always tie out to everything that I do to the penny to 10940. It needs to make sense, okay? And especially, like I said, if you have somebody that's nitpicky like me, I'm going to pick this apart and wonder why you're charging me different prices and things like that. It doesn't matter whether it's the software or anything else, okay? It's the process in which you're doing these things. And if you don't know, make sure you understand because you're either leaving money on the table. Well, you're for sure leaving money on the table and and to it just you want to always look like you have it together when you're dealing with these clients you do even if it's chaotic on the other end of things and I have seen it done so many different ways you do want to make sure that you're a united front and nothing looks like um, it's not processed properly okay there's nothing worse than somebody questioning your accounting okay especially when somebody is spending sometimes upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've seen clients spend millions, okay? And if you if I'm spending millions on your firm, no, I'm picking things apart, okay? That's just the reality of it, okay? And, and so I do want to make sure that that is very clear. I have an extended version um, for my members. I have the cheat sheets and everything else. Um, one more thing I wanted to definitely bring up on this before we close out. Um, I was going to end it, but I thought, you know what, let me talk about it. Um, invoicing these out, how I would do this, usually if I know that the PO ties, which is usually what I'm looking for, that PO needs to tie out to make sure I didn't, you know, undercharge anybody. Or when you know things are good and final, 
like if I were to post the payment, then I would know that all of these costs were final and then I could go ahead and invoice it. And what that looks like, I mean, I'm, go I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the sake of this video, but let me show you um, what this looks like, okay? And the beauty also about the way I set these up, so you can see how um, I did these for a certain reason, the way I did, and I'll show you um, when I invoice these. So this is for the bathroom sconces. And just because something wasn't on the same PO or proposal or any of that does not mean um, you can't invoice them together. I, I like to invoice things where I can label. So bathroom five sconces, okay? And that I would leave it at that. But, okay, this shows everything, okay? And it gives the breakdown. But if I were to I want to send it to the client, what's beautiful about this is knowing how to set things up because I can say I don't want to show all items and I want to just do first component. First component is going to now show the items here, but you can see that the amount is still the same, whether it's you're showing all the items, okay, 392.31, or you want to break it out by the component. Okay, so now it rolls up all the costs. They don't need to see all these other things, and that's what they owe. Okay, and I always make sure I label my proposals and invoices because I'll tell you, it's hard to locate things when you don't have them labeled. Okay, so um, I like to do it that way. So if there are any other questions, let me know. But you can see that now um, th they're going to owe for, obviously, the freight adjustments on all this that was at 392 or whatever it was okay so if there's any questions leave it in the comments and let me know